for a Langdon Tactical Tuned Pistol, I was expecting a trigger with a better reset. Hey everyone, I'm Brett, and welcome to Nightwood Guns. In today's video, we're finally looking at the PX4 Storm. This one has been done up by Langdon Tactical. So this pistol has recently seen a resurgence and has been hyped up since it was previously overlooked and underrated, mostly because people thought it was ugly. So I took this ugly duckling for a 1,000 round spin, and while it is very impressive, it may have been just a little bit overhyped recently as people are trying to get it to gain some traction. That being said, this is an honest channel and you will be getting an honest review. This was purchased by me for the channel, so there are no strings attached. So as per the usual, you will be getting the pros and the cons to see whether or not the PX4 Storm is worth your hard-earned money. There are certainly a couple of things that I did not like very much about the PX4 Storm, but there's so much to love here, so let's hop into it. Oh, and by the way, I did test the VP Armory Compensator Systems, the one where you can attach the X300 weapon light to it, and the one without, so we will definitely dive into those to see if those are worthwhile upgrades. Now, as I mentioned, this was a 1,000 round review, and I was able to do that thanks to the help of Buffalo Creek Ammo. Buffalo Creek has become my number one choice for target ammunition. Their 115 grain is very soft shooting, great great plinking and training ammunition, and I highly recommend them. So right off the bat, this is the full-size PX4 Storm, and in my opinion, this is a great size for a do-everything pistol. Even though it's full-size, it definitely can still be carried concealed, and uh, this is kind of a Goldilocks pistol. So since it is full size, we are rocking a 17 round flush fit capacity. And of course you can go higher than that if you so desire. So if you're looking for a double action, single action pistol that can be carried concealed, carried outside the waistband or be used in a home defense role, boom. This is a pretty decent choice. So the thing that makes the PX4 Storm so special is it has a rotating barrel system that helps absorb felt recoil, and no, this is not a gimmick. This is not the first pistol that has had this system, but it was implemented very well with this, and it's unfortunate that this pistol was so overlooked when it came out, unless you were playing Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter at the time. Or maybe you were a fan of Inception, or later on maybe you were... Uh, popping certain people in watchdogs after seeing what their online profiles looked like. And of course, there's my favorite, Resident Evil 5, Jill Valentine was running this. So this pistol definitely had a pop culture presence at one point when they were trying to get it to catch on, but I think it just overall gave people the ick. But the deal with the rotating barrel is that it absorbs recoil on the way back, and I have to say, this is the softest shooting, non-ported, non-comped, semi-automatic pistol that I've ever had the pleasure of firing. Not only is it incredibly soft shooting from the factory, no modifications, it has a perfect return to zero. This thing just shoots effortlessly and the follow-up shots are a breeze. The best way I could describe the feeling of shooting this pistol is it's a luxury experience. And for a polymer frame duty pistol, that's impressive. The other thing that surprised me about the PX4 Storm is it has very comfortable ergonomics. I was not expecting this gun to feel so good in hand, especially when running it out at the range. Now, as I mentioned, this one has had work done by Langdon Tactical and for my manual reviewer. This was not aftermarket work. This is a brand new pistol. It came this way from the factory. No modifications. So as far as the trigger goes, the double action pull is very light and smooth, and that's something I rarely see see on a polymer framed hammer fire pistol with a polymer trigger shoe. Double action pull, super easy on this. The single action pull is a very crisp and clean break, easy to touch off precision shots with this, but we're going to go more into the trigger a little later because there's something about it that I wasn't too crazy about. The low profile decocker on this is perfect. It is a G style decocker, so it's not a safety. When you press it down to decock it, it springs back up, so it's always ready to go. But there's enough of a lip on there to easily catch it with your thumb without it sticking out so much that it gets in the way when you are racking the pistol, holstering it, whatever. I also really like the magazine release. The shape makes it easy to hit for all hand sizes and they have it checkered so that it grips your thumb so it's not slipping off. As far as other features on the gun go, the slide serrations are serviceable, no complaints there. It has a decent beaver tail. It doesn't feel like the bore axis is getting in the way at all. And it also has a decent undercut so you can get a nice high grip on the pistol 
and the ergos really are surprising on this thing. I really enjoy shooting this. It also comes with three different back straps so you can get the trigger reach exactly where you want it, make it fit your hand. This is an excellent choice for appendix carry. I like hammer fired guns for appendix carry. That way, when you're reholstering it, you can decock it and put your thumb over the hammer so you can safely holster it. Even if you're in an emergency situation, your adrenaline is pumping, as long as your thumb is on that hammer, you are going to be safe to reholster it. And not only that, it's a hammer fired gun that is polymer framed so it keeps the weight down, and usually when you have lighter weight guns, they can be a little snappy, but thanks to the rotating barrel design, it absorbs that recoil and makes this shoot like a heavy gun. So as far as the VP Armory compensators go, they do their job. They reduce muzzle rise on the PX4 Storm. That being said, if there was ever a pistol that did not need any kind of muzzle rise negation, it would be the PX4. So while the VP Armory compensators are extremely well made and they definitely reduce muzzle rise, they actually work, they're not gimmicks, I just don't really see them as being 100% necessary, but they are well made quality products. So if you're interested in getting one, I say absolutely go for it, but just know it is not 100% needed for the PX4. So yeah, throughout 1000 rounds, this thing ran 100% flawlessly, 100% reliable. I was a little iffy with the rotating barrel design that, you know, maybe as it got dirty, it would start to have issues or start to chug, but it ate everything and kept going. I never even cleaned this thing out of the box. I just took it out of the box, started shooting it. Thousand rounds later, here we are, no malfunctions. So now that we've gone over all of the pros and you can tell I kind of like this pistol, Nothing is perfect. There are some things I do not like about this. Let's hop into the negatives. Now, I just want to hop in really quick and say thank you to today's sponsor, DPM Systems. Basically, it's a recoil spring assembly that you just plug into your pistol, and it has a progressive spring system that cushions recoil and eases it back into battery. It makes it easier to maintain accuracy during rapid fire, which is important for competition, training, and of course, personal defense, because it actually can enhance the reliability of your pistol by reducing the chances of a limp wrist malfunction. So if you'd like to pick up a DPM kit for your pistol of choice, be sure to check them out at DPM Systems, that is a dot com, and you can enter my channel name minus the guns at checkout for a little bit of a bonus. I think you'll be happy with it. So the number one negative is going to surprise nobody. If you're even a little bit aware of this pistol, you will know that it has absolutely zero side panel grip texture. It is as smooth as the brain of whoever you don't like. Now, the Langdon Tactical model tries to remedy this by including Talon grips in the packaging, but my experience with Talon grips is if you're actually running your pistol, they don't really last very long. I much prefer handle it grips and handle it does make excellent grip texturing for this, but I was gifted a roll of goon tape. So I've just been using it up on all of these pistols with crappy grip texture that I've been reviewing. So just know that if you're going to get the PX4 Storm, I'm not kidding. You're going to need to get this thing stippled or you're going to have to keep up with stick on grip texture. But if they're trying to make this gun happen, they're going to have to reintroduce it with some kind of side panel grip texture. It is like the one glaring flaw and I can't believe they have not addressed it. That being said, if you love the pistol, it is not a deal breaker because there are solutions. The next issue I had with this pistol is the slide stop was really sticky using it as a slide release until I got to the back end of the thousand round period. It took a lot of reloading and a lot of magazine loading to break this thing into the point where I didn't have to stand on it to send the slide home with a live round. It is nice that the slide stop is so long to make it easy to hit, but it's such a thin lever, there's not a lot of real estate there to actually get some serious purchase on it. Not the end of the world, still totally serviceable, just an observation I had while running it. Now finally, this was the thing that I struggled the most with. I eventually did get used to it, but it was a frustration in the beginning, and that is for a Langdon Tactical tuned pistol, I was expecting a trigger with a better reset. So as you can see, the reset is surprisingly long on this thing, uh, especially for a Langdon Tactical tuned pistol. I was expecting it to be more similar to the Beretta 92 tuned up by LTT. And you know it's bad when a stock HK USP has a shorter reset than the PX4. Both are hammer fired polymer pistols with polymer trigger shoes. Um, so the fact that this one has a longer reset to it is a little disappointing being tuned up. 
And it also didn't help that I had my Langdon Tactical Beretta 92 out there that has a reset that's like an eighth of the distance of the PX4 Storm. But the reset on this one definitely took some getting used to. The first few strings of rapid fire I did, I did not release the trigger all the way to reset it and you know, couldn't fire it. But after a while, I adjusted, got used to it, and then I busted the Langdon Tactical Beretta out again, just to see how fast I could run that thing with the reset, compared it to this, and there's a difference. So if I was gonna run a Langdon Tactical Beretta, I'd get a 92, but if you're looking for something polymer framed with the rotating barrel softer shooting, just know that you're gonna make a little sacrifice on the reset. So this is definitely one of those pistols that I had to get a little nitpicky with, with the negatives, because it is a surprisingly phenomenal pistol. If you're interested in the PX4 Storm, I would get a Langdon Tactical model. I would also get one with the SD beefed up barrel and one with the flat trigger shoe. I think that would get you the all around best PX4 Storm. I'll also say if you can find an older one of these pre-owned, you can usually get them stupid cheap and that's definitely worth picking up in that case. Overall, the PX4 Storm gets the Nightwood Gun's seal of approval. This is a recommended pistol from me, though it is not a personal favorite. But I am certainly glad that this is seeing a resurgence. I am a fan of firearm history, and it's really cool to see an overlooked pistol getting attention again, especially one as cool as this. If you've enjoyed some of my videos in the past, or if you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Got some exciting videos ahead, including the Stealth Arms Platinum. Platypus finally got it in after 19 weeks and it's a 2011 pistol that takes Glock magazines that you can completely customize to your own liking so you're not going to want to miss this. In addition to that I've been running the new Streamlight TLR7 HLX. This thing has the output of an X300 in a small package. I'm a huge fan of this thing so far and you're not going to want to miss the review so some exciting videos ahead. If you want to help boost the channel hit that like thumbs up button. I know it's easy to forget to do that and leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the PX4 Storm or feel free to ask any questions down there. And finally, the links in the description below are the place to be if you'd like to further support the channel. Definitely appreciate all of my patrons over on Patreon. You guys keep the lights on here at Nightwood Guns. Really appreciate you. But other than that, it was great seeing you guys again, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Brett, and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out!